Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are, fashion dolls, and welcome to a Style by Stevie exclusive interview. I'm so excited to be doing this interview this afternoon. Tonight's interview is going to be one for the books. We're going to be interviewing one of my favorite singers of all time. She is coming. 30 million albums sold. En Vogue is one of the lead vocal female groups of all time topped with TLC and Vogue is known for their classy lyrics their classy sense of style and tonight joining me is one of the former members of en Vogue, the lovely the beautiful Don Robinson ladies and gentlemen will be joining me in a few minutes so in the meantime, just giving you a little bit of the backstory of En Vogue. They've sold a lot of records, 30 million to be exact. Can you guys say that three times fast? 30 million records. I'm super duper excited to be doing this interview tonight. We're going to have some fun. We're going to be talking about the music, of course, and my favorite thing, fashion, more importantly. Okay. Hello? Stevie, I don't see your notification. I don't know how to do this. Okay, I got you. <laughs> okay, let me send you an invite to your DMs. Check your DMs, and I'm going to send you an invite. I'm on my DMs already. That's why I said I don't see anything. Okay, did you get it? Okay, just now I did. So. All right. Yeah, you just come in, and I'll add you to the live. You just come in my live and then I will add you. It will be a button where I add you on and people will be able to see you. So what do I do? Click live? Yeah, click my live. Join my live. The audience says they hear you. Yes, this is her, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, click my live. I just sent you. Okay, are you in? I'll see you. Your name will pop up across the screen and then what I'll do is I'll add you in okay let me send it to you again don't worry let's see there we go Oh my goodness. Okay. Um try your phone. Will your phone try your phone and see if that'll work, if it'll let you come in like that. Um check your DMs on your phone and then you can join like that. Okay, click the video that I sent you and your name will flash across the screen. You'll be in the live and the audience will be able to see you in the um comments. Okay, there you go. There you go. I see you. I'm about to add you. Yes, I sure do. I'm about to add you. I think right? there we go. There we are. We got it right. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Here with me tonight is Don Robinson from En Vogue, and we're going to be discussing fashion tonight. It's going to be so amazing, but first we're going to talk about the music, of course. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, now you ladies have had so many hit singles from Hold On to Don't Let Go, Love. Another one of my favorites that did not make the cuts is Love Lines. And that's from the Born to Sing album. Yeah. And more importantly, you ladies just celebrated your 30th anniversary. Exactly. How big is that? that was, what was it like reuniting with the ladies? It was nice. It was very nice. It was uh, that was for a charity event actually, um, and it was uh, it was remarkable. I mean, we we hadn't been together, and the four originals hadn't been together. Uh, I left the group in '97, and I came back in 2009 for what we try to do our 20 year anniversary. Um, and that didn't work out. They chose a different deal than what I wanted. I thought it was better to choose something else. And they chose the Rough Town deal. And things kind of fell apart. Um, so we've done spot dates here and there. Um, we toured quite a bit. 
and uh, and then they decided that they wanted to go in a different direction again. So I parlayed away from that, did my own thing, and um, yeah. So, but it was nice to it was just nice to hear the feedback from the fans um, when we reunited for the charity event. It was a cancer charity event, and it was really really nice. It was beautiful because. I don't know, we just got a chance to see what the fans have thought about us all these years. And, and we haven't been together in a while, so it was kind of like, whoa. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was nice. And it went viral. It broke the internet. And when I seen all five of you, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, my childhood dream. Because I would have been still in diapers when Don't Let Go Love came out. And I seen the video. Yeah, I'm 26. I just gave away my age. Oh my gosh! What? Yes. You're just a baby. I'm 26. I'm still a baby. Well, so when En Vogue came out, I would have been still in diapers. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you weren't even born when we came out. We, you, we came out 30 years ago. You're 26. You weren't even born yet. Yes, and my dad put me onto your music, and he started playing. I remember when BET used to have the shows, what was it, Planet Groove and Video Soul, and I used to see your videos all the time, and right. my grandmother would have been still alive around that time. And exactly. that's when I seen Don't Let Go Love, and the other mu music videos and the fashion more importantly which we'll get into in the next hour but we had to discuss the music Dawn still sounds amazing yes she still does she still does and when I posted the photo people were like is she giving us a new single so what is your response to that a new single well known but not quite yet we have a single that I'm uh, trying to get licensing rights to that I put out like three years ago and the company that released it didn't do the right thing. They didn't know how to promote and market the song. So it kind of got lost in the wayside. And so we're trying to reinvent that song and recreate it and put it out there. So that should be soon. Um, and I'm writing my autobiographical book as well. So that's going to be a great, great story. Um, people get to see, you know, behind the scenes stuff in a way that I'm telling it. And it's not to dish anybody. I don't do that. It's not to dog anybody out or to talk nasty about anyone. It's just my truth, how I lived it, how I saw it, my career uh, with the other three girls. So that'll be soon as well. Now you've been very vocal in the group and I consider you more so as like the Lisa Left Eye Lopez of the Envo. You know, Lisa of TLC was very outspoken and you were very outspoken on financial issues. Exactly. And that's why I fell in love with you. I'm like, okay, what's the biggest misconception that people have about you that you want to clarify today? Um, you know, it's been put out there that I'm out there that I'm, <laughs> it's been put out there that I'm like a loose cannon, but it's like, yeah, I am crazy to a certain point because I've had people steal lots of money from us. I mean, we were we should have been millionaires and none of us were millionaires. And when you talk about left eye I think she said um, in one of those interviews, she said that they made, I think it was a dollar fourteen per girl per record, and we made wow. two cents per girl per record, two pennies. So she made a dollar fourteen. I was like, at least you guys made a million dollars a piece. We made two cents per girl. Cindy made two pennies. Dawn made two pennies. Maxine and Cindy made. Terry made two pennies each. So there was no way for us to make it money. So yeah, I was pretty much postal at a certain point, but. Um, Whenever you are trying to speak up for yourself, especially as a woman, they want to label you crazy. So the misconception is that I was too cool or I opened my mouth too much. I will always open my mouth. I was, I was put on this plan to speak up, to say things and see. When I see it, I say it. I don't back down from a challenge. And I don't back down when people are taking advantage of us. So, and, and right now it's about me. So. Um, I will always speak up. I will always be vocal about stuff like that. It makes no sense for all the people around us to be millionaires and multi-millionaires and then and vogue the ones that made the records and toured the world to make those records um, and crossed over on the charts. Exactly. <laughs> those little girls on that first album didn't know any better. But as I started to see things, I'm born to sing, I had no clue. Um, and I was just happy to be there. But on the, once you sell a certain amount of records, certain amount of millions and you go double platinum platinum and double platinum you're supposed to tear up your old contract contract and go in and renegotiate for a new contract and we didn't do that at all so on the second album we went in to do the born to we went in to do the funky davis album under the same terms yep that we did the first album on. the same exact terms so we made two pennies wow. on that record too and we still didn't get the money we still didn't get paid like everybody else around us so that's why I was so verbal. That's why I was like, oh, hell no. I got to speak up. 
And um, I think sometimes when you speak up, um, it's it's anyway, it's it's whatever job you have. Sometimes you have a uh, a union at a nine to five situation. You have the head of that union is the person that speaks for the people, for the coworkers. And I was trying to be the spokesperson for our group because, like I said, we were not making the money. Everybody else around us was, but we were doing a lot of work. So I didn't understand that at all, and I thought we should have gotten our lion's share of the, of the money as well. Um, we weren't asking for more than people else. We wanted our share. And the girls weren't behind me on that because sometimes when you speak up, you speak up. other people are scared. Not everybody wants to confront what's going on or speak up about what's happening, and they're too afraid to say anything. And I was like, I'm not. Hello, we need to get paid. So then I was labeled crazy, and I was labeled all kinds of stuff. So that's good. I'm good. I'm, I'm good with being labeled whatever they want to label me, but they can't tell me that I'm complacent or just okay with what's happening. I'm never going to just be okay with not getting paid. My work, my wealth. So, long story short, but long story yeah, that's yes, I see the comments in the audience. Oh my God, it's my phone is blowing up right now. Everybody loves them some Don Robinson. I do too. I've been a fan of yours, like I said, since diapers. Like my father put me onto your music and Vogue. I'm like, who are these girls? Wow. And then I remember I was coming home from school and the Hold On video, and everybody <laughs> remembers the iconic black dresses. Yes. Now. That. You've had some input on how the group looks like there's been a lot of comparisons of Destiny's Child and the Supremes and the Jones girls like where let's talk about it the fashion and then we can get back to the music. Yeah. We're going to do something fun called oh. Does she remember oh. this look? Now oh. this is the Essence cover and I went and I found that I say yes I have to have this cover so Tell us what was it like shooting this cover? Okay, I have to tell you, you can see how I'm, if you could see my expression on the cover right there, I'm kind of talking. I was talking and laughing at the same time because I hated those outfits. And Terry was like, Dawn, if you don't behave, because you can see her face, she's like, Dawn, if you don't behave, <laughs> they're going to catch you with your mouth open. And they sure did. My mouth was wide open. And you can see that because I hated, I thought we looked like fish. Like, goldfish or something with all these different colors on and I hated those bodysuits. They were jumpsuits. But yes, I, and in the My Loving <laughs> video, people were talking about the character dressed in the um all the silver. Now, how did that come to be? Well, um, so I was going to go from the first video just to tell you about Hold On. So can we go from... Yes, category? yes, we can go to Hold On. The Hold On, first video, um, we had no budget. Of course, you know, the record company didn't want to put a lot of money into that. Us. They, didn't, they didn't know who we were yet. They didn't know if we could sell yet. We didn't have an audience yet or a fan base. So they were like, we're not going to put a whole bunch of budget. So they had hardly any budget. When we got there, the clothes were raggedy. And they, they weren't raggedy in the sense that they were secondhand or anything like that, but they were just terrible. We didn't like what we were looking at. So um, I had brought my dress from home. We had brought a, a few things because we kind of knew from the conversation with the stylist the day before that they really didn't have a budget and they just brought some odds and ends and stuff they were going to throw together. So we brought our own black dress in. And I brought my dress that I used to go to the clubs in <laughs> to wear in the end Vogue video. So the Hold On video is my actual black dress that I used to go clubbing with my friend. Yeah. Okay. Look at a picture of us at a club in that dress. In that very same dress, yes, exactly. So, um, and then the director for that video, uh, Tar Sim, was a, was a college student. Again, we didn't have a huge budget, so we got this kid who was a fresh out of college, and he was a uh, he was great at what he did, but you know we didn't have a budget again. So he put it together in his way. And when you see the guys, sometimes the guys are dancing really fast, and then sometimes yes. really slow. So we had to sing. Um, we had when we sang really fast like hold on to your love you gotta hold on hold on to your it was sped up really fast and we had to sing and that made them slow down and then when we sang it really slow hold on to your love we sounded like men but that was the way that the guys were dancing really fast so it was his technique of doing that it was kind of cool because you hadn't you hadn't seen four women singing like that our harmonies um, it was just pretty incredible when you think about it. And again, we didn't have a budget, but he was so creative that the video came together the way it needed to. And it tied in perfectly because of you ladies. A lot of women started wearing black dresses more often. Yeah. I was debating on whether I was going to pull out my long black evening gown tonight or not. 
and show up as the first, the fifth member of In Vogue, which we'll talk about because there's a parody that you guys, that you ladies did with Jamie Foxx on A Living Color. And that's one of my favorite skits. So that's included in the looks. Now, one of my favorite looks that you did also was the Free Your Mind. Like, that's such a social construct song and it's so relevant to what's going on today. Now, did you ladies predict that this song was going to be big as it was then into now? Not well, you know what? I got to say, when I heard it in the studio and I knew that Denny was doing, Denny and Tommy, Denzel Foster, Thomas McHale were our producers. Um, and Denny was like, yeah, you guys, I'm going to do, we're going to do a rock song on you guys. I was like, because ah! that's my category. That's that's me all day long, rock star, whole, whole thing. My, my mindset, the way that I grew up with rock in my home. My, you know, my dad was playing Led Zeppelin all the time and playing um, the Beatles, you know, the Carpenters and all this music in the house. So Crosby, Stills and Nash. So that was my world. And when he said he was going to do a rock song, I lost it. I was completely like, what? what? You're going to do a rock? So I was ready for that. But then when I heard the music, I was like, okay, we're going to, we're going to, this is going to cross us over in a way that we hadn't before. Um, I just thought it was risky. When you listen to the born i mean the funky divas album and you hear that rock song in the middle of everything that to me was taking a huge risk and i thought only in vogue could do this like yeah here we go and so i was really proud of us just for taking that step you know um so i knew that it was going to be a hit but i didn't i didn't know if our people black people were going to accept it as a rock song because that's not what in vogue does typically we do r b so to come from nowhere with this rock song, are they going to accept it or not? And they accepted it hook, line, and sinker. I should have known better because one of the biggest and best rock stars to this day, he's been dead 40 years now, but Jimi Hendrix was an amazing... Oh. Yeah, guitar, exactly. So he's... All of the rock stars, all of the rock guitar players, like the Van Halens of the world or Eric Clapton's of the world, they give him that props, his props to this day to be the best um, rock guitarist. So I should have known that it was going to be accepted. Um, and then what else? Uh, what else did we do that I knew right there? Because when we released it to BT, BT was like, oh, my God, there's too much guitar. So we were like, OK, you either kind of accept it as it is, because we couldn't go back in the studio and record it in a different way. And um, they accepted it. So five minutes before uh, BT was supposed to um, release it, I'm sorry, five minutes after BT released the video, then MTV released it as well because BET was our foundation. You know, that was our, that's our, our audience, our demographic was BET. So we knew not to cross them, but we also wanted to keep the integrity of our song. So we were like, come on, you guys, let us, let us release it in the way that we want to, the way that we recorded the song in the beginning, in the first place. So they were like, okay, finally, they said fine. And we, we let them release it five minutes before, and then MTV was re released it five minutes later. So... Hey, I see all the comments too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yes, you named one of my favorites, Alana. Oh yes, you don't have to worry. Everybody remembers the bee, the um, bumblebee in the video, the silver no outfit, the, per the platinum colored wigs. Everybody <laughs> remembers this. <laughs> yeah. Now, how did that song come to be? You don't have to worry because when it starts off, it kind of, um, and Patti LaBelle, we just had the verses with Patti LaBelle. Yeah. That's the first thing that comes to my mind, the sample of that song. So how did You Don't Have to Worry have to be? Well, Denny and Tommy, again, they were just geniuses. I mean, the music that they had for us was yes. such spectacularly for us, exactly. Um, they've had other artists that have recorded their songs, but we were the ones to come out and be like, it was just, it was a match made in heaven. Their music, our voices, everything together. That particular song, I don't remember so many years ago, but they said they had the song and, and Cindy was going to be the lead singer of that one in particular. Um, so, but before that, it was Lies. I don't know if you remember after Hold On, the second single was Lies. Yeah. And that one, I only know about the clothes because the, the silver wigs and all that stuff, I was like, okay, you guys, the platinum wigs I loved, but I wanted a long one and they didn't have a long one. I was like, what? I do long hair. So um, they didn't have a long wig for me, but um, it was fun, you know, wearing silver lipstick and I thought it was like risky for you don't have to worry. But lies before that was kind of graphic, the black and white. Oh, yeah. Dots, the stripes. Um, 
And I love, even today, if you think about it, you know, what about the husbands who's on a mission, politicians lying about this, that, and the other? That's exactly where our world is. So we were kind of ahead of our time, even with that song, I really thought. Uh, lies, as far as lies. And some of the lyrics, the lyrical content in your music is so relevant to what's going on today. Who would have thought that 2020 now, your music would have still had an impact on the world and people would have still been looking to it like, okay, this is what we're going through right now, it's the current political state yeah. of everything that's going on. It's very relevant, exactly. Thank you. I, I don't know, sometimes, even with Free Your Mind, well, just some, give some stories, because you, you mentioned Free Your Mind and we kind of skipped you, you don't have to worry, but Free Your Mind, um, the day of the shoot, we had a different hair person than usual. It was usually... Um, Roberto Leon, who's been with us since day one, he's the one who was like, you guys, your hair, your makeup artist is tired. You got to get with someone new. And we were like, "Ha, oh, we love her, we love her. And then he brings in this kid that he said, I have this kid who's homeless. We were like, what? He said, yeah, he's homeless, but he's genius. So he's sleeping from couch to couch to couch, but he's genius. Let him try your makeup. And he came in our room and he did our makeup for free just so we could see his look. And he was genius. Uh, Troy Jensen is his name. Close my door. The dogs are going crazy. So. Oh my goodness! Y'all are naming all the songs. We gonna get. We gonna try to get to some of them. Oh my God! Y'all are naming some of my faves. So free your, what all oh, they are. Oh my God! So let me see. So uh, free your mind. Um, Terry had to be sewn in her pants because they split while we were on set. She was like, "Oh my God, you guys, my pants!" And then, <laughs> sure enough, she. <laughs> She, uh, she had to be sewn into them on set um, because if they pulled them off of her, she had her boots, her thigh-high boots, it was too much. So they sewed her right into her pants. Um, so when you see the video now, you know, oh, Terry was sewn into her pants. And then I think we were wearing Ozbeck and Claude Montana back then. Um, when I got to the shoot, we had a different hair person. And she, she did, my weave was all new and it was prepped and it was sexy looking and it was beautiful and it was straight and long. And she put... The front, if you see the ponytail that I have in the video, she put it in a ponytail. Yes. It was long and it was hanging down. You know, this is my hair, but she, it was hanging down in the front and it was long to my chest. And I was like, oh, this is cute. And she took some scissors and cut it right where you see it. I wanted to cry. <laughs> I wanted to scream. I was like, why did you do that? And she said, no, honey, just look. And I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, okay. All right. I, I, it was nice after she did it, but I was, if she said, if I would have told you that I was going to cut it, you wouldn't have liked it. You would have screamed at me and told me not to do it. And she just did it. And I was like, okay, this is hot. This is different, you know? Um, so we, I was always pretty much the one to try the most with, I think in that video we tried, each of us tried a different type of hairstyle than usual. And I was always the one to take more risk with my hair and do shortcuts or, long weaves or weaves to my butt or like a Chinese uh, bob or you know what I mean I always kind of changed it up a lot and took risks so whatever whatever the videos you want to ask about if you look inside the Funky Debums album jacket you will understand what she's saying when she definitely took a lot of risks because that cut my mom loves this haircut right here the bob oh, cut a lot awesome. of women are starting to wear the bob cuts oh my goodness y'all are coming in with the questions oh my lord my love, and you never Ooh. get it. Okay, let me talk about, you want to talk about that one? Yes, don't go, oh, that's one of my favorites. The fashion in that video was everything. The orange, and so then you had, oh my goodness, the white outfits, it was just everything. Exactly, on the desert. So the reason that we're doing all those hand movements and all that stuff that we're doing and all that, um, we're actually spelling our names. We're spelling D-A-W-N. Oh, E R R Y, yeah, because we didn't have any choreography. <laughs> it was good and it turned out beautifully. I'm like, okay, are they doing some? But it tied in because of the desert and the whole scenery in the desert. It was just beautiful. But my favorite was the white scene. I did. I love the white scene and I love the orange scene. Wow. See, the white ones look to me like we're missionaries or something. We look like. <laughs> We look like missionaries. We don't look sexy in that video. And then it was so hot. You can imagine. We were literally on the desert, and it was so sweltering hot. And then they had us in all this material and these wraps. And I was like, you guys, I'm going to pass out. So we were cracking up because we were so hot. But um, we kept forgetting 
which name we were on. And we was like, wait a minute. So we're spelled, which name are we? Max, Maxine, Cindy, Terry, Dawn. We were cracking up because we kept missing. I don't know how they caught us at the same time doing the same words, but it came out the way that it came out with us doing the right words at the same time. Um, I love the stage scene. We have a stage scene where we're doing all these movements and beautiful stuff. And I love that. That was really gorgeous because we have those sexy black dresses and our choreography was just gorgeous. I love that. Oh, oh my goodness. There's so many questions. I see them. Okay. Oh. They're talking about your rap on lies during the um, Arsenio Hall performance. Well, wait a minute. Let me go back to Never Gonna Get It first. Yes, My Loving. That's one of okay. my favorites. We'll come back to Runaway Love and My Loving. Runaway Love and then yes. the, the performance. I don't remember that performance on... Is it Arsenio Hall? I did the rap? Yes, Arsenio Hall. Oh, that's right. I just saw that not too long ago. I think my mother was playing it. Um, I mean, because we had Debbie T, who did the, the original rap on, you know, um, Lies and Deceit. Yes, he's running real rap. The community's suffering. Yo, I can't stand it. So she did that on the record. And when we did live, we didn't have the budget to bring her in. So I was like, oh, no. They said, Dawn, you have to do it. I was like, you guys. I don't rap, you know what I mean? Yes, you do. You did, um, it ain't over to the Fat Lady Sings on, on Born to Sing album, you know. <laughs> so so they wanted me to do the rap. And I was like nervous because I, you know, breathing to rap is different than, and we were doing choreography. So I'm trying to dance and breathe at the same time. And I was like, you guys, I'm running out of air at the end of it. Oh my gosh. Um, it's different when you're in rehearsal and you you're singing or performing as opposed to with an audience there and cameras and all this stuff, then you're more nervous. So that adrenaline is not there when you're in rehearsal. So I didn't feel that at all. And when I got to the show, it was like, I'm running out of air, but it was cool. It was cool. I got through it. I got through it. So Runaway Love though, um, the Runaway Love video. Oh my gosh. I think that's probably between Free Your Mind and Runaway Love are my favorites. Those are my favorite, two favorite videos. And um, the, what is it going on? With, with Runaway Love, what did we have? It wasn't really, there was nothing. It was like a desert. It was like a desert and y'all had the sexy white outfits. I love them. And then y'all went topless. And I was just like, whoa, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Exactly. I was not expecting that, but it was beautiful. It was classy. Exactly. It was weird because he wanted us to do that scene and we thought, why? <laughs> why do you want us to be naked you know we couldn't understand it but it worked out it really did it had i guess it was it wanted to show the desert again um it was actually Ohio, so it wasn't quite the desert but it was outside of los angeles and he kind of wanted to show nature and us natural and i'm like okay that's a little too natural um <laughs> but it worked out again it worked out the way it was supposed to and i love the part where the high part that I do and, and I, yes. I love that because it, it goes into slow motion right there in the video and it's very sexy. So we start dancing inside and our producers are actually in that video as well. Denny and Tommy did that video with us. So um, the breakdown, just before the breakdown starts, Denny looks at the camera. That's Denny. And then Tommy is playing one of the instruments as well. He's playing a keyboard. So we had all of our producers were there. It was a fun video shoot. It was way out in the desert again, but or in Ojai. So we were isolated. We couldn't shower and clean up because it's, you know, dirt and dust and everything all over the place, but it was a lot of fun. And Cindy's husband, Glenn, is one of the guys in the very beginning. He's running with the plane in slow motion. That is her beautiful husband, Glenn. Glenn Braggs. <laughs> he is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Especially then, yeah, he was a handsome man. So we had a lot of fun. A lot of fun in that video. Y'all got a lot of questions tonight. Oh, my God. I can't get... Okay, um, we get to my girl, D. Rashawn. One of my favorite videos. And, of course, we're going to pull up the fashion in that video, of course. Yes, I see them. Wow, wow. Red dresses. Yes. Oh, my God. We will never... That will be forever a part of who we are. The red dresses are iconic. Um, that was probably a shoot after the video because it looks like we're still dressed. We still have our same makeup on. Um, we've done lots of remakes for that same shoot or that same particular video, but that looks like the actual shoot from the video that day. Um, what can I say about don't like, I mean, giving him something to feel. The 
producers for that song, well, Denny and Tommy were the producers, but the, the, the people that were in the guys, because we had an audience of guys, if you remember, and we were so, we were more nervous than doing a regular show because it was just us and these few guys out there. So it was a tiny little audience. It looks like a bunch of people, but it was a bunch of guys and we had to be sexy and sultry and all of that. You know what I mean? And it was like, um, <laughs> it's different when the lights are down low and you're in a club or, or a, an arena or, um, you know, a coliseum and you can't see anyone out there, but we could see them. And because they had lights on the audience, it was like, it was all lit up. We didn't have any place to hide. So we were kind of nervous about that. But I love that El DeBarge is in there. Um, oh, what's his Johnny name? Gill was in the video as well, too. Exactly. Uh, the guy from the original uh, Sparkle, the movie, he was in there as well. So you were not even born yet. <laughs> you weren't even thought of. But that guy was in the in the video, so um, it was really great to see all of them. It was nervous to perform in front of all of them, you know, and still try to be sexy, even though your legs are like shaking because you're nervous and you want to leave and go home. But we had a great time that day. We had a great shoot. It was iconic, again. And I love how the video opened up and it showed y'all silhouette, the curves, and then the dresses, and like it was everything. And then the audience turned to the men, and the men was in there. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> it was so beautiful. It was okay. Another one of my favorites that we didn't get a chance to discuss is this video. Woo! Never gonna the get walk. Yes. The walk. The yes. walk. Walk. Okay, let me tell you about that walk. So we had, the dresses were made out of metal and it was freezing. They were made out of metal. Yes. Um, if you remember, you don't remember at all, but back in the day, they used to have soda cans and the soda cans, you used to have to pull the tab and pull it off the soda can. So they took those tabs and they linked them together to make our dresses. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. So the metal was cold. Everything that we did was freezing cold and... Um, so at the end of the video, we were already dressed to go home. We had changed our clothes to our street clothes. We were getting ready to leave. It was almost two in the morning and we were tired. We had been there since 5 a.m. the morning of, or the morning before. Now it's 2 a.m. the next morning. So we're getting ready to leave and the director runs in and says, oh my God, ladies, please don't leave. Um, if you don't mind, uh, you know, hair and makeup, you guys stay too. We want to do one more shot, one more last shot with the girls. We were like... Please, our feet are killing us, and we have blisters and all kinds of things. It's like, please, just one more. Just put the dresses back on. We want to do another shot with you guys. And we were like, oh, my God. So we got dressed again. We got makeup all touched up. And that scene right there, it started raining right when we were sitting, getting ready to walk outside. We started seeing drops of water on the ground in the alleyway. Yes. And right then he was like, so walk sexy. You know what I mean? Walk like, like it's hot outside, and you're just sexy and walk. Bam, bam, bam. We were like, it is freezing, it is raining, and it is not cool. But we did it. So when you see us at the end of that video, that's what you're seeing. That whole, put it, turn on your, uh, your sexy, turn on your diva, and, and go. And that's what we did. Now, Matthew Ralston shot this video. He's yes. worked with Jen Jackson and a lot of other artists as well, too. What was it like working with Matthew Ralston? Because he knows how to make a woman find her perfect light. He and enhance her beauty on camera. Yeah, he brings yeah. her to life. Well, he does what they call, I think he kind of coined it, but uh, beauty lighting. So when we're doing the breakdown, now again, again, that whole part, it was him with a close-up shot of us, even though you can't see the camera or anything, but we looked into this donut thing and you couldn't move very much. You had to move very, stay contained within that shot. You can't go outside of it or move side to side, but you can turn your head. You just can't move out. So we were like trying to do that and stay contained in that um, that scene. But yeah, he had beauty lighting around us. So that scene is kind of soft lighting, kind of beauty lighting that he introduced us to. But yeah, you're right, Matthew Ralston. He also did um, What a Man with us in, in uh, Salt and Pepper. Salt and Pepper. Yeah, he did that video as well. Because once they saw him do our video, they were like, we want Matthew Ralston. So um, they called in a whole beauty uh, crew and Matthew did the video so it was cool and of course we remember this video right here everyone remembers this one 
Free your mind. <laughs> yes. 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 And those boots, those boots were everything. Like the runway, I love because oh. they were saying that you guys were going to take the runway on tour. How did the runway come into the video? Like it's so iconic. The runway was the director again. So what we do before every video, we would read a treatment from different people that would, um, directors that would say, you know, I want to, um, I would like to bid to do this video. And this is my idea. So a treatment is just an idea, a synopsis of what the video would be like. And we loved his idea. We loved the runway, of course, was in vogue all day long. That's fashion. Um, so we were like, okay, cool. We, we picked his treatment because he had these, and everything that you see in the video. So like in the beginning, you see that monkey, you remember the monkey? And then you see the, the old, um, I think there's an old, um, wrote a song about it. Like the here, here it go. Where's the guy? Did he come into that video? I think there's a man in the video in the beginning. Oh yeah. There's a, there's a painting of a man with his, his mouth wide open. He's screaming and he's got his eyes are covered. That photo, yes. that picture was exactly that picture was seventy foot tall, like it was super tall. The runway was super tall. Those curtains that we have that open up on the runway were super seventy foot tall, like you would look up to them. I mean, everything was was built to scale. So we were in a we were in a bunker. Or what is it called? Uh, a hangar that was a hundred feet tall. So everything that you see was gigantic. It was gigantic. Everything in that video was gigantic. Um, so yeah, it was, it was beautiful. A little oh, nugget for us. Let's get to some comments. Oh my God, y'all, they're coming in so fast. There's a comment. Thank you for these. I see you. Oh, Sean. Oh, Sean, how are you? Um, I don't see any of the other comments. I only see two comments at a time. So you got to tell me what this. <laughs> Okay, this is my girl, D. Rashawn. She is also an influencer, so make sure you guys go and subscribe to her YouTube channel. She says, because of you ladies, I've always made it a point to be fearless, sexy, and beautiful. Thank you. Yes, En Vogue has set the trend for so many women. And you ladies have auditioned out of, I think it was 30,000 girls, and the group just came no. together perfectly. No. It wasn't oh, my God. Girls. It was only um, 16 it wasn't a cattle call type of, of audition at all. No, it wasn't that. I don't know where they got that from, <laughs> but it was only 16 to 20. I mean, there were a lot of women in the Bay Area that I thought, oh my God, if they audition, they're gonna be in this group because I sang with a lot of them. I was a kid, but I sang with Brenda Vaughn and I sang with a woman named Lisa, um, who was a Native American and black, so you can imagine how gorgeous she was, um, super tall, just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous woman. And um, yeah, there was only a few, a handful of us that, that auditioned for the group. It wasn't a cattle call at all. So the four of us made it. And, you know, another girl named Jordana who auditioned. I'm writing all this stuff in my book too, so I don't want to talk too much about what happened. But um, there was, yeah, she was at the audition. She came with Maxine. She was her roommate. And she kind of had a nasty attitude. So I was like, wow, she's not going to get in the group because she was like, asking for food and beer and we were like okay this is an audition they're not supposed to provide food for us you know um but there were just a handful the bay area has oh my gosh so many artists that come from the bay like tower of power slime family stone um who else oh my goodness uh rosie gaines who did diamond diamonds and pearls with uh prince um prince. Mm -hmm. exactly uh so many beautiful talented people in the Bay Area. So I just thought, I'm, how am I going to get into this group? You know what I mean? And it was, it was meant to be for all four of us. In fact, Terry was at, at, in college. She was in Prairie View, uh, at Prairie View University in um, Houston. So she didn't even live in the Bay Area, but yet she was meant to be in this group. So it all worked out. And it tied in perfectly the lineup because everybody remembers the faces of In Vogue. Like I said, when we turn on the TV or we look at the music videos, and the first thing you're known for is the fashion and the beauty. And that's why I gravitated towards the group so much. Yeah. Now, another shoot that I'm going to get into that I think you probably might have forgotten. This was actually the cover of Vibe magazine. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Oh, I now Matthew Rosen did that again. Matthew Ralston did that shoot. Um, 
it was a ooh, we had different looks so that's just like a kind of a daisy dukes you know um southern gal kind of look and it was super cute and i loved it it was i was in my element you know um cindy was seven months pregnant i think if i remember she was seven months pregnant and she was annoyed <laughs> she was like you guys i'm hot i, I want to go home we were like cindy just a couple more hours you know i'm trying to get her to stay but yeah, that was that was a an iconic photo shoot as well. Vibe magazine, uh, Matthew Ralston. Yay! Oh my and goodness. The crop tops, ladies. The crop tops are coming back. Meg the Stallion and a lot Rihanna. A lot of them are starting to wear crop tops. So crop tops are in style, ladies. So don't forget that. Exactly. Another one of my favorite music videos. Like you, ladies, transition so many looks. Hey Tim. Hey Posh Twin. This one right here. Oh man, that was Don't Let Go! Yes, yes, uh, Don't Let Go. Um, wow, what about that video? So that was, that was a little bit of dish because I had just found out that they wanted me out of the group. So I was coming for them in a way. Yeah, because I found out it was hush hush, found out, and uh, I felt a little bit weird being there because I knew they didn't want me there, but I sang lead on the biggest hit. And I'm here, and, and y'all don't have to like it. But um, it was it was great having, uh, what's his name in the video as well? Um, Makai Pfeiffer. Makai Pfeiffer, yes, Makai Pfeiffer. So there's two different versions of that video. One has the footage from um, Set It Off, which was an incredible movie. I still can't to this day believe that it was so different than what you're used to seeing. Um, because typically... You don't see black women robbing banks. That just doesn't happen. We don't rob banks. That's not what we do. So it was just so different. I thought that was very um, risky to take that risk as a director for him to do that movie. And to ask us to do the video was just, heck yeah, four women in the video, four women in the video. I'm sorry, four women in the movie, four women in the video. It just made sense to me. So it was perfect. I was so glad that he asked us to do that. Um, and that song fit the scene that it was in and I went nuts because it was Blair Underwood and I was losing it. I wanted to meet him but he didn't come to our <laughs> he didn't come to our video shoot so we never got to meet him but um we've met him over the years but not that day. So yeah again that was a iconic video. It was really great. Um being in New York they shut on Cindy's scene so like I said they have two different versions. In the version with us and our footage, our particular footage for each girl, we ha each have a vignette, what they call a vignette. And for my vignette, uh, I was I was in the bedroom with Makai, and he was filming me on the bed, and um, he was filming my, you know, I was kind of giving him sexy and doing all this stuff, and he was filming me, and then um, then on I think Terry was next, and she was in, in a boat with Makai going to oh, what do you call that? Um, the uh, just because Statue of Liberty, she was like on an, uh, on a date with him, and then Cindy was in the car with him in the back seat, like they had a driver, and it was a, a Rolls Royce. But they shut the city down for us that day. Like all of downtown was shut down completely. You know, Union Square was shut down. So I was like, oh, Cindy, look at you. You know, because they shut it down for us. Um, very very sexy video. Very sexy. But you could tell that we're angry. We were pissed off because Makai is cheating on all of us with each other, each of us. You know, so I was the first one to curse him out, you know, and then Terry's the last one to curse him out. So that video. And then Maxine is in the scene with him in the bedroom. Um, she's dressing him and putting clothes on him, and it's very sexy as well. And then Terry's scene. Yeah, Terry, Cindy, Maxine. We all got, yeah, different scene. Yay! And in a way, it kind of <laughs> reminds you of the Free Your Mind video because of the makeup. And But this one, some of the ladies had toned down looks, but your lips, the, the bold statement lip is what people will, even when I go to Google Vimo, your image will always pop up first, the lip color. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Yes. So the theme song from Hanging to Mr. Cooper, like, in has had so many looks, like the Batman movie, everybody remembers that. That's Bat Boy. <laughs> that was your line. So, how did y'all get to make a cameo appearance in Batman? The franchise is is powerful. Yeah, Joel um, Joel Silver, uh, God rest his soul. He just passed away. I think last year, earlier this year. Um, 
an iconic director, he wanted us in the video. He loved In Vogue and he wanted us in the video. So we said yes. Um, of course we said yes. But uh, it was the first time they, they had um, bat, they had uh, what I call Bat Boy, but uh, Robin in the, in the movie. Um, so when they asked us to do that, he wanted us to play street women. <laughs> we played prostitutes basically in the future. So that's why we dressed all crazy like that. But I'm like, oh, who is this rolling up? And we're all, all over the car. And then uh, the top of the car, well, actually, before he got out, we looked in the um, in the sunroof. And I looked down and I said, that's not Batman, that's Bat Boy. So, yeah, that little moment we had, that was fun. And Joel, yeah, he, he requested us because he loved In Vogue and um, kind of was a diva himself, you know. Really, really good man. We had a great time that day on that shoot. It was long hours again. Um, so now we want to talk about fashion. Let's go to the movie Life. Oh, come on! The, um, it's like a little. How can I describe? It? It's like a, a not a cabaret, but it's like a nineteen forty. I loved it. Yes, thank you so much. It was a speakeasy, what they call a speakeasy back then. Um, yes, a little nightclub in the south, and I had on this gorgeous. When when they told me they wanted me to do the movie, they said, um, "What is your your look has to be specific." So do you have any ideas? And I said, well, because um, they, they said a flapper dress, which was short and fun and had a fringe and, and um, you know, it had a lot of movement to it. And I said, that's fine. If I was doing a, a faster song, I could see that. But I think I should do a gown. And they were like, a gown? Good. Because they had at um, Paramount Studios has a room that they have all this uh, material in there. So I went in the room and I was literally overwhelmed. It's a warehouse. I said room, but it was a warehouse, okay? And I'm looking around and they have all this um, fabric. As far as your eyes can see, all the way down. I was just like, I'm overwhelmed, you guys. I'm overwhelmed. So they started pulling bolts of material out. And they said, why don't you wear something by Marlena Dietrich? And I was like, and I'm thinking it's already a gown that was already made. She's an old actress um, back in the 40s, 50s. Uh, she was from Germany, Berlin, Germany. And um, so I was like, oh, my God, I would be honored to wear. And I thought it was a gown. And they started pulling out material. And they said, no, we're going to make you a gown. So when they made that gown, it, they made it on a bias, which is what, um, if you're going to make a gown, instead of making the gown straight up and down, they made it on an angle so that it hung on my body like my own skin. When I tried that, when that gown came out and they had it ready for me, I was just like, I have never looked more beautiful. Like literally, don't like, I mean, giving them something to feel was great, it was gorgeous, but this material, I don't know where they got it from, from Marlena Dietrich, but um, it was just, it was incredible. So it was kind of a gold shimmery, yeah, it was beautiful, beautiful. And I, and in the scene, it sounds like I'm singing to the music, and I am, but for some of the scenes, because Emmy Murphy had to do his scenes and he couldn't have music on because he couldn't hear himself talk, so they had to turn the music all the way down. And at one point, it was low, low, low. And then I was like, you guys, I'm sorry. They were like, take 70. And I was like, I'm so sorry, but I can't hear the music. So they were like, you have to kind of figure out where you're at. So I was like, drop me off in hollow. And I'm trying to sing to the music. And he's screaming over there, girl, look at you in that dress. <laughs> and everybody <laughs> in the room is cracking up because he's talking to me, but I have to act like I can't hear him because I'm supposed to be singing to the band. So how can I hear this man talking to me if the band is playing? So I had to pretend that I couldn't hear him. Oh my God, it was hilarious. Because you gotta not laugh and not respond to his comments to me. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. But yeah, it was, it was a blast. Oh yes, yes. I remember that that was for the Soul Train Awards when they came out with like the almost close to new gowns for the Don't Let Go Love performance in 1997. And the fans and the hair, I loved the makeup and everything. Like I love a monochromatic look. Like how did that look come to be? Like I loved it. It wasn't too much. And then it kind of reminds you of Destiny's Child performance when of the brown gowns they wore to give the guys the lap dances on stage. It was Usher, it was Magic Johnson. So I said, I did a side-by-side -side comparison and I said, wait, these ladies are responsible for this. Wow. So how did that look come to be? Thank you so much, Miss Stevie. Um, so I don't know when, because we were, Don't Let Go had just come out. So I'm not quite sure if Destiny's Child was around yet or not. Um, that was 97 when I left the group. 
So yeah, that's his shelf was definitely out. You're right. So I don't know which one. I don't know if we did ours before them or they did theirs before us. But um, you know, it was there was a lot of influences from each. Um, and I have to go back to never gonna get it in a second. But uh, that per particular performance, what I hated about it, I loved the dresses. They were gorgeous. Our bangles were way too big, so they put tape at the bottom, clear tape, so you can see it. Because <laughs> they kept falling off our arms. They were really huge. So uh, that was one of the little behind-the-scenes uh, things that we were doing. But um, it, was, it was just beautiful. But they had those huge fans. And they were blowing so hard that was drying up my throat. It, all of us were dried out. But I had to sing lead. And I was like, you guys. Please turn those fans off. And, that, and our choreographer, uh, Frank Gatson, was like, no, keep the fans on because them girls got to look good. And they, I was like, Frank, we have to sound good first. <laughs> Sounding good is the most important part. I don't care how I look. I, I can have a thumb cap on my head. I don't care. I want to sound good. And we're already nervous. And the fact that we have fans on us are going to make us even, when you're cold and you're shivering at the same time, you can't even talk, let alone sing. So he was like, well, y'all got to keep the fans on. So he kept the fans on. And we did our best, but I can see where I'm struggling. When I watch it, that particular performance, I'm like, oh. You know, because you see stuff about yourself that nobody else notices but you, but I did notice. And getting back to Never Gonna Get It, we had on the pole, there's a pole scene, and I did a shot by myself, but all of us on the pole with those curly wigs on. And I think we have on shorts. Yes, yeah, like y'all were like ballerinas. Y'all were all stretched out on the I remember it. Yes. They, we had on black in that particular scene, not the silver dresses. And um, we got that scene from uh, Sweet Charity. Our, our uh, choreographer, again, Frank, referenced that video, that movie. He would always go to different movies to see what what we could do that was iconic that other people did and kind of bring it into what we're doing. So it was like that with him. And he was really brilliant when it came to that kind of stuff. He would bring in old footage from old movies and say, you guys, we got to remake this part. Or we got to use that. So from Sweet Charity, the minute you walked in the joint, da, da, I could tell Big Spender, hey, Big Spender. He brought that scene in and had us do that particular thing with Paula. I think Paula, I forgot her last name. She just passed away as well. The black woman. Um, and uh, Shirley, Shirley McLean. Shirley McLean, um, who had the main role in the movie. And he just really, Frank was the reason that the, I want to say Frank was the silver man. And Frank was the silver man in the video. Never going to get it. Exactly. But I don't know if it was his idea to bring the silver man in or the direct or, or Matthew Ralston tie that in together. But, yeah, we had a lot of moments. You guys are amazing. Hey, Tanya. Oh, my goodness. I love the interest walk on stage when they performed in Vogue. Yes. The, oh, my God. Let's. In Vogue has had a lot of guest appearances on a lot of shows. You've done the theme song for Hanging with Lisa Cooper. You've done the, hang song, the theme song for uh, Rock. Uh, you've made an appearance on A Different World. You've done the movie in the Batman movie. Like, In Vogue was everywhere. And then you did the Diet Coke commercial. Oh. Spike Lee directed that one. So. <sighs> when I tell you, when I tell you. Well, the, the, the Spike, the Coke commercial was great. I just thought we could have done something much bigger because we were in Vogue at the time. We were at the top of the world, and every the world was our oyster. I love the idea that Spike Lee had, and it's Spike Lee. I mean, come on, you can't go wrong. But I just thought, pow, it should have been like, I don't know, like we're on stage in an arena with all these fans for miles. You can see, you know, hundreds of millions of fans and, you know, that kind of thing. And we're singing to to fans around the world. Like, I had all these different ideas, um, and he just wanted us to do, da, co, co, co. and it was that. And it was like, okay. Anticlimatic, anticlimatic. Um, um, somebody just said Paula Kelly, and that's exactly who was in the movie hey, uh, Sweet Charity, so that Hey Big Spender scene was Paula Kelly. But, uh, and Cheetah Rivera, exactly, Cheetah Rivera. Um, so anyway, yeah, I just thought, and then what else? We did a KJ commercial with Kevin Johnson uh, for Converse All-Star sneakers with Kevin Johnson, and I couldn't stand it. I really, I just, I wanted my hair to be different. And we were like, let's go for braids. Let's go for, uh, you know, what were those braids called? Um, 
kind of like a crown that they wanted us to look like we were wearing crowns on our heads. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, this is something else. You know, I always had different ideas. I would, I was always the one, and I know fans are going to laugh at this, but I was always the one to come with tear sheets <laughs> out of magazines and say, this is how I want my hair. This is how I want my makeup. This is how I want this. I want to wear this. I want to, you know, I was always like driving uh, the hair and makeup people crazy because I'd have ideas <laughs> of how I wanted to look every single time. Yes, Dawn, we know you have tear sheets. Yeah, we get it. I'm like, whatever. At least I know what I want. Okay, and speaking of acting, I'm pretty sure you remember this next photo I'm about to show you oh. and where this came from. Oh. Oh Lord Jesus! Okay, I can I can I can be calm about it because it was what you just said. Um, um, it was what's the show? In Living Color, Jamie Fox, exactly. Wanda, 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 Wanda. Oh my God! How did we get through that scene? It was so extremely difficult to put on a straight face when it came time to <laughs> because. Wanda kept doing the lips, and he, Jamie Foxx was going, because he knew we were laughing at him on scene. I was like, Jay, Jamie, we can't do the scene if you keep making us laugh like this. He's like, y'all, I'm sorry. Y'all got to, y'all, oh, whatever. I was like, no, we can't do this. With you got to come on. We got to act. And he was like, I can't help it. I'm Wanda all the time. So he was in character from the very beginning. And we was like, oh, we can't do this. He was great, though. And that was a funny scene. And then you felt sorry for her after, and she was like, they left me behind. Yeah, it was so cute. It was super cute. But the sequence dresses. No, honey. No. And the gloves to match. I forgot about the gloves. Oh, my gosh. You went and found that shot. Look at us. Oh, my goodness. Cindy is in her element. She's the one on the end. <laughs> and she is this one right here. She's on the end, and she is happy. Wait, what am I doing? This one. That's Cindy. She was happy. She was in her sparkle. Cindy loved anything that sparkled or shimmy, shimmery or any kind of like uh, tassels and stuff like that. Yeah, she's funny. Okay, another one of my favorite looks that someone brought up in the audience is the tribute to third degree, the Afro. Wow, yes. Oh, okay, I got to tell a little fib. I was going to tell a fib that I loved it, but I'm going to tell the truth. I hated the wigs. I was like, last minute, I was like, you guys, I was sitting on the side of the stage and I was holding on to that wig and I said, you guys, I'll take it off if you guys will. I hate it, I hate it. Terry's like, Dawn, no, we can't take them off now. Mine looks good. And she was patting hers and I was like, no, it doesn't. I hate it. And she's like, uh, Cindy was like, Dawn, um, I think it looked really, really good. I like it. I was like, Cindy, please, no, I hate it. And Maxine was like, don't even look at me because I'm keeping my wig on. I was like, you guys. So when we come out, I was like, hey, y'all, what's up? Get out your motherfucking seats. <laughs> because I was so pissed off that we had to wear those wigs. And it was iconic. Had they listened to me, we would have been a mess. Um, I'm glad that they didn't listen to me because it actually ended up really beautiful. And it was like what the 70s should have been, you know, what the 70s should have been. Yeah. All right, now everybody was talking about the Hanging with Mr. Cooper theme song. What was it like working with Mark Curry doing that theme song for that show? Because the show is so iconic. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Um, yeah, the show was iconic. Uh, and he's from the Bay Area, too. Mark Curry is from the Bay, Oakland, California. Um, that For that reason, it was amazing. And then the fact that Terry's best friend... Uh, Holly Robinson was on the show, too. And then you got um, Dawn Lewis was on there as well. So we had met her on the set of A Different World. When we did that skit and we were the, um, the grandnieces of the, of the, of the chef, uh, we were his nieces and um, we were just church girls and all this stuff. So we met her on that set. And then the fact that we did Hanging with Mr. Cooper with her was all a blast. We had too much fun that day. We laughed and had fun and um, had all these different changes, but they picked... I think two. No, they picked the, the black where we had on hats and, and black dresses for that with boas and stuff. Yeah, it was fun. That was a lot of fun. How do I get some of your music that you've written on mine? Well, you have to stay tuned. 
We have to come back for a part two because we only got a minute left. Exactly. They only okay. give us 30 minutes. Okay. You got to come back.